And so I'm sitting there one one morning. I did a night shift. I'm there at about three o'clock in the morning, thinking, "What am I going to do with my life?" And I'm flicking the newspaper, and uh, there it was: the Australian College of Physical Education. Oh, yes. and, and I thought, "Wow, that's it! That's it! I'm something I'm passionate about, and something I can do as a career." Found out how much it cost at the time, so we're talking like the early '90s, and I thought, "Well, I can't afford that." Yeah. Um, let's go to the next level. And I found a course back in the day, I guess it's equivalent to your Cert 3s and 4s today, but it was called the yeah. Fitness Leader 1 and Fitness Leader 2 course. And um, applied for that. It was just a, a short course, a couple of weekends for about four weeks. Um, and met a gentleman by the name of Paul Batman. Yeah. And um, spoke to him, and, and he was fascinating. He taught me how the the heart worked in one night. All the chambers and the flow and the oxygen and all the valves. And I thought, this is, this is awesome. This guy's unbelievable. He could teach anything. Spoke to him and he was a uh, university lecturer as well at the University of New South Wales. How did you handle um, you know, that situation? He hands you the whiteboard marker pen and he says, draw up your... Your intentions, like, were you a bit nervous or did you just dive straight in and just get going with it? Had you prepared for those sort of potential scenarios or were you just not winging it, but, you know, like, how did you handle that situation? Yeah, look, if anyone says they're not nervous in that situation, they're they're not telling you the truth. Yeah, I was nervous, but I backed myself. I just said, look, this is my only chance. I'm in front of uh, what was, he was then the assistant coach at the Boomers, I believe, and... um, head coach of the Sydney Kings, and I thought, back yourself. So be confident, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can't can't be fearful in those situations. You've got to go for it. You've got to really grab it, and and I did, and uh, the nerves quickly went as discussion built up. You know, questions, and you go, okay, well, that's a good question, and I see where you're coming from, but this is what I believe, or this is what research shows at the time, and uh, this is how I would approach it, and and then all of a sudden, you're in a, a conversation like you and I are about yeah. a topic area. You're not in an interview and, and not in a, you know, a formal sort of uh, setting where you're trying to land a job. It's just a conversation. And um, you mentioned Paul Batman early days. So who have been some other strong influences along, along your career to help you get to where you are today? Okay. Well, this is a, a multifaceted one. But who, who influences you the most? I, I, I've split it down to three sections. Um, first and foremost, the coaches that I've worked with, which have been many, they've all been unbelievable, but Brett gave me my first chance. He was the one that, that said, um, here's the head strength conditioning role for you, for the Sydney Kings team at the time. Um, so that was a big influence to me. Learned a lot from him. And when he left the team, he went to the NBA, a guy by the name of Brian Gorgian took over, who now is the Olympics uh, men's team, the, the senior men's team coach for the Olympics coming up, and has been prior years as well. Worked with Brian for 13 years, both here oh, wow. in Australia and China. Um, was fortunate uh, to, to win uh, four championships with him, both in Sydney and in Melbourne. Working in China as a coach, how, how did you tackle that? Uh, that English, the, the language barrier, and, and how did it influence you, you coaching, uh, like the art of coaching, I guess, uh, to help you where you are today? Yeah, great question. Um, I guess the, fir- the easiest thing that I did to try and learn was sets and reps. In the gym, how do you say sets? How do you say reps? How do you, how do you say this exercise? How do you say that? When I got there, the biggest thing was, okay, the, the language is way out. You know, I don't know what anyone's saying. So you have to work through a translator. Um, so that was the first challenge. And then the, the bigger picture challenge was um, <laughs> how, you, how you do everything in an uh, environment that's completely different to what you're used to. So to give you an idea, my longest preseason preparation was the first year, and we had a nine-month preseason. Wow. And at the well, time, we're training a week, all day, every day, twice a day. God. Gotcha. What is the landscape like for S and C for basketball in Australia? Paid positions, sub elite opportunities, cultural uh, culture considerations, etc. What What are the opportunities like? Uh, I I really 
I really believe you make your own luck. I mean, I really do. You, the harder you work, obviously opportunities need to present. Um, showing your uh, willingness to, to do what it takes to get into a position is something that's it's, it's important. I mean, it's very competitive these days. It's very mm. competitive. You know, the, the amount of jobs that are out there and the amount of sporting teams, depending which sport you're looking at, it's competitive. You might have 100, 150 people apply for the one job. Um, so at some point in time, it's very individual. You've got to uh, make those decisions for yourself, but there definitely are opportunities. Um, you've, you've seen a lot of uh, high-level athletes that compete at the world stage. What are some things that um, you've noticed that, that they do really well um, for, for the you know, developing athletes tuning into this podcast that are, that are keen to get better? You're always going to have highs and lows. You always have peaks and valleys and troughs. You get, you're going to have all of it. Resilience. Resilience. If you have a clear picture of, of where you want to get to, you, you have in your mind, what you want to achieve, whether you're an athlete, whether you're an S&C coach, uh, whatever field you're in, you have that clear picture and you do whatever it takes to get there within the realm of legalities and, and, you know, and everything yeah. else that's going on in this world. And you do everything. You give yourself every opportunity but you have to maintain consistency. 